Welcome to CAS Tutorials, and in this video, I'll be covering practice problem 10.3. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. And if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. So let's get right into the question. We're given this circuit over here, and we're asked to find IO using mesh analysis, right? So the first thing which I see is that we have this over here. We have a current source in parallel with a resistor. And from chapter four, what I want to do is a source transformation using Ohm's law, which says V is equal to IR. We have a current source, we have a resistor. We're going to transform this configuration here into a voltage source in series with this same resistor value. I mean, just basically to find the value of the voltage source, just basically multiply these two. So you're just going to multiply 6 with 6. As you know, 6 with an angle of 0 is the same as just the constant 6. So you're going to say 6 multiplied by 6, which is 36. And that is going to be the value of our voltage source. And now, remember, the positive terminal of your voltage source is going to be on the side where the arrow actually points. So the arrow points in that direction and therefore the positive terminal of our voltage source is going to be on the left. This is the voltage source with the value of 36 volts and we have that same resistor value in series with it and now we draw the rest of the circuit. Right? So now drawing the rest of the circuit before we do our mesh analysis And this is what we basically have on this side. And our IO, which is the variable which you're interested in finding, then we're just going to close our circuit like that. So now we can put labels in these loops so we can easily identify the currents which are associated with each loop. I'm going to call this I1. Then I'm going to call this I2. Now, if you look at the direction of I1, it goes in that direction, and IO actually goes in the opposite direction, and therefore IO is equal to negative I1. So essentially, to solve this problem, we're essentially interested in finding I1. After finding I1, I1 is actually going to give us IO. So after finding I1, we're going to find the negative of I1, which is going to be IO. So let's do that quickly. Starting with the first mesh, so we're going to say mesh with I1 or mesh I1, whatever you want to call it. This first mesh over here. Going around, we have 8 I1 subtract J2 multiplied by I1 plus J4, which is over here. It is shared. And here's a rule which I use for shared impedances or shared resistor values. You multiply that value by the, the mesh current which you're currently dealing with. You're currently dealing with I1. Then you subtract the other one which it actually shares with. It shares with I2. So this impedance is shared between I1 and I2. But we're now dealing with mesh I1. And therefore we say I1 subtract the other one. So whatever you're dealing with, subtract the other one, which it shares with, right? And that is how I computed that. You can also look at the, the top node and just analyze it from there. You'll find just about the same thing. But that is just my convention. That is just a quick way which I use to remember how to formulate these, these things. So we have one, two, three elements in our mesh. One, two, three terms, and that checks out. So you can now simplify this and say... I1, we have I1 there, so we're going to have 8 plus J4 multiplied by I1. Then we're going to have negative, so this is J4 multiplied by, by that, which is negative J4, right? So that is what we have there, and this is associated with our I2, so negative J4, I2, and we have nothing else associated with I2. So this is our formula, which we found from our first mesh. So it's just going to be that. As it goes to zero. So this is the first equation or the first formula which you have. Moving on now to mesh 
I2 or MASH2. Starting with the shared impedance, we are going to have J4. And as I said, the convention which I use, the current which we are working with, subtract the other one, which it shares with. Then we're going to say plus 36, which comes from the value of the voltage source over there. This is plus minus, don't forget. It encounters, when we're going like that, it encounters a positive first. That's why we say plus 36. Then I'm going to say plus 6 multiplied by I2. And here we encounter another voltage source with a value of 30 with an angle of 30 degrees. Then we say plus 30 with an angle of 30 degrees. is equals to 0. We have 1, 2, 3, 4 elements. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. So that checks out. Let's just simplify all of this. So grouping the I1s, we have negative J4. We have, that is all we have in terms of I1. So negative J4, I1. Right. Uh, let's group the R2s. We have J4, we have 6. So we have 6 plus J4 plus 6 plus J4 multiplied by R2. And the constants, we have 36 and this 30, which is which has an angle of 30 degrees. So just simplifying that, we're just going to have on the other side of the equal sign, we are going to have adding these two. So we're going to add these two up. And just punch that into your calculator and add those two up. And taking that to the other side of the equal sign will actually give you negative 63.77 with an angle of 13.60 degrees. So this is our second equation or our second formula. So now let's take these two equations, let's say, up here. So we write them down. So the first equation says 8 plus J4 I1 subtract J4 I2 is equal to 0. And the second equation says negative J4 plus 6 plus J4 I2 is equal to we have a value of here we have Negative 63.77 with an angle of 13.60 degrees. So this is what we have. These are the two equations which we have. And our aim is to actually solve for I1. We don't actually have to solve for I2 because we aren't interested in really finding I2. The question said we should find IO and that is a relationship with I1. So let's focus on finding our I1. And that, that I1, we're going to negate that, and it's going to help us to find our IO. So I'm going to use Kramer's rule and just group all of these into matrices, right? So 8 plus, so the value which you have here is, um, so let me just have a recap on what I just did here. So this is negative, this is associated with negative J2. That is, so this should be 2, sorry, because we have J negative J2 here. And we have J4 over there. So J4 subtract J2 is going to be plus J2. So we have plus J2 over there. Let me just quickly check everything else to make sure I haven't made any other mistakes. So everything else looks fine. Okay. So here we have 8 plus J2. And next we have negative J4. Over here we have negative J4. Four, and here we have 6 plus J4. And here we're going to have I1, I2, which are variables. And on the other side of the equal sign, we have 0. And 63, negative 63.77 with an angle of 13.60. This is what we have up here. Just so here it's not quite clear because it's squashed. So it's negative 63.77 with an angle of 13.60 degrees. So now, using Kramer's rule, we're going to find the first determinant, which is formed by saying 8 plus J2 multiplied by 6 plus J4. And we're going to subtract negative J4 multiplied by negative J4. And the value which you're going to find from the first determinant is actually 56 plus J44. Moving on to the second determinant, which we found by taking this column, so the first column of this matrix, which means we're going to multiply 0 by this, which is going to re 
result in zero, then we're going to multiply negative j4 by this. So then we're going to say minus negative j4 minus 63.77 with an angle of 13.60 degrees. So you're going to multiply negative j4. It's going to be multiplied by negative 63.77 with an angle of 13.60 degrees. And then you're going to, don't forget this negative again. So these two are going to be form a positive. So just multiply j4 and that, and then negate all of that. So the value which you're going to get is delta 1 is equal to 255. 0 0.08 with an angle of negative 76.4 degrees. Now that you have these two, we can easily find I1 because according to Kramer's rule, I1 is equal to delta 1 divided by delta. So this is what we're going to have. We're going to divide this value by that value. And the answer which you should get as your value for I1 is actually 3.58. 3.582 with an angle of negative 114.557. But let's look at the relationship between IO and I1. So IO is equal to negative I1. So just put negative here and some brackets in your calculator, and you're going to find the actual value of your IO. And you should find your IO to be 3.582. 58 with an angle of 65.44 degrees in amperes.